Hey. I just want to give a friendly reminder to please mute yourselves in between your questions to ensure everyone's audio is great. We're going to go ahead and start off with Jennifer from Cherish365. You may go ahead. Oh, it looks like maybe he's still connecting. Tim, we're going to start off with you with a Geek Daddy. You may go ahead. Hello, Tim Burns from AGeekDaddy.com. I want to say that me and my son watched this movie together and he laughed throughout it. 12 year old middle school humor. He just loved the movie. I, I really liked it too because of the uh, daddy uh, daughter dynamic that uh, something I'm somewhat going through with right now. Uh, my question is in the very beginning of the movie, there's a scene with the son going through a phone book, uh -huh. uh, which uh, is something that I had to explain to my son what a phone book was. <laughs> such a uh, wow. technology focused uh, show. Was there some other symbolism to that, similar to the way there was symbolism in the uh, wooden uh, animal that was shown throughout the uh, story and kind of tied into the father daughter dynamic? Um, I think with that, I mean, that just comes from real life. I was an obsessive child. Um, you know, and I was like, I would, I did that, except I did it about um, Dreamcast games. I would call, <laughs> I would call Electronics Boutique and be like, hey, um, do you want to hear my opinions about Skies of Arcadia? I think it's a groundbreaking RPG. And they're like, kid, 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 we don't have time for this right now. Like, I gotta, I gotta sell, I gotta sell Game Boys to moms, you know, or whatever. And yeah. so, so it, unfortunately, there's no symbolism. It's just the tragic reality of my lonely childhood. <laughs> oh my God, it's amazing. <laughs> Okay. All right, Amy from As the Bunny Hops. I loved the Katie vision in the film. So I was just kind of wondering what the inspiration was that and how that all came together, how much of a challenge that might have been to kind of add those 2D aspects to the animation. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I, I think it was, um, I, I definitely, it was something that we wanted to do from the beginning, but it like, we didn't know if it made sense. And sort of, uh, it was cool because like Chris uh, Miller and Phil Lord, who are producers for the movie, um, they are sort of like, they're producers. So it's like, it, producers are kind of like prison guards to like keep the artists in check, you know? <laughs> and they were sort of like crooked prison guards. They're like, hey man, just do it. Like the, the boss isn't looking, go, go, you know? <laughs> so they were always encouraging us to like go crazier. Um, but I, I think it just would have been a goofy idea if it didn't actually, uh, uh, lock onto the character's personality um, because we we were able to, we found that it really worked when it was able to give new insight to what Katie was going through um, emotionally. Um, and I think if it didn't, it would kind of, would have fallen out of the movie. It's just something that was like wacky for no reason. Um, but we found that it worked best when it was like reflecting Katie's, um, you know, or Abby's, you know, uh, thought process, you know. Thank you. Thank you. Melissa, Dandelion Woman. Yes, hi, you guys. Love the film. So hey. fabulous. Thank you. Um, so, so tell me, Michael, I'm always curious about the creative process. Can you share with us kind of what triggered you to write this film? Was this a moment in time, an event? And you do have to tell us about this cute guy, too. Sure. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, it, uh, I will tell you about this little, this little gentleman. Um, he's based on a real dog named Monchi Chi. Um, I thought so, yeah. My uh, sister's dog growing up, and I loved dearly. Okay. Um, and and so a lot of a lot of the elements of the movie were were personal, and it started with you know my family, and 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 basically because my family is a little you know like I sort of am open about like oh yeah we're kind of you know we're not say hey. um, and I always found that I connected with people when I was sort of able when I admitted that, and because they were like I my family's nuts. I did you know I everyone seems like they've got it together. Um, and I feel like no one does. And, mm -hmm. um, and so we just wanted to have that in the movie. And just in terms of like what sort of inspires, you know, uh, uh, me or whatever, the whole movie is just like working with people that we really love. Mm -hmm. Like it was awesome to work with Beck who I've been watching on Saturday Night Live and skits and he like every voice record for every line that's in the movie, there's like 150 hilarious lines that he would just like rattle off. And I would just like be, <laughs> covering my mouth and throwing pens and stuff yeah and that's that's because that's like largely in part because of 
of Mike. He's he's so fun to record with. He's like he laughs a lot and he encourages it. It's like I don't and I I don't think there's ever like a you know you improvise and stuff and not everything's gonna be funny. But I don't think he was ever like ah, okay we're good. <laughs> You know yeah, what I mean? Like yeah. he instilled a lot of confidence uh, in me, and I'm sure I can speak for the other performers as well. So, uh, well, it was yeah. it was easy because it was all great. And Beck is like every robot in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was very excited to to find that out as I watched. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Fabulous film, you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer from Cherish Three Sixty Five. You may go ahead. Thank you. Yes. Hi, I'm Jennifer Bourget. Um, so I have a question, Michael, really mostly for you. My kids, it's so funny. We were watching this movie and at the end of a movie, we like to talk about, you know, what did you think about it? What did you take away? What, you know, not like make it too serious or too heavy, but um, they're like, I don't want to say a little stressed about robots now, but they're kind of <laughs> like, okay, the message is don't trust robots, you know? Yeah. But what, what are you hoping that um, people and families really take away from this film? Um. It, it's, I mean, it's as, it's very corny. My answer for this <laughs> is the the most corny answer you can find, but it's true. Um, the movie's very sincere. Like I'm, we're very sincere on the movie. Um, but but it's, it's just that, you know, basically it's hard to be a member of a family because it's, it's sort of like, you know, you, it's so easy to fight with your siblings or your parents or whatever, or like, oh, I'm not gonna apologize. It's their fault, you know? And it's hard to be magnanimous and say, you know what, I'm sorry, dad. Or, you know, if your mom calls to like take the time and answer the phone, you know, and it's like, to me, really, if we can heal the nation, then I'd be happy. No, but if we could like, you know, bring families together, um, that would be sort of like my ultimate, uh, you know, hope for the movie. Um, and then with the side of you know, it's like, it's sort of like, you know, it's all a joke, the robots, but it, there is a part of it where I'm like, hey, kids, this is, this is <laughs> don't tell anyone, but they are coming. No, I don't really think they're coming, but I do think that, that even though technology is great and it's allowing us to talk and I could talk to my parents during the pandemic, but it also, there are also, you know, legitimate, you know, it's sucking our attention and tech companies are not always have our best interest in heart at heart. So, um, so I do think that um, I, th those are sort of the main messages, I guess. <laughs> I love that. And Kristen from Gen Y Mama. Hi, thank you. Um, so my question, I'll, I'll say it to uh, both Michael and Beck. So in the movie, we see Rick, who would really rather just live off the grid, you know, take all the electronics away. And then Katie, you know, who's always kind of looking, viewing the world behind her screen. Where on the spectrum do you fall? Do you wanna to be totally off the grid or do you need your phone in hand, constantly scrolling, constantly checking notifications? Um, for me, I'm, I'm somewhere in the middle. Um, I grew up with uh, my mom, like, like I went to her outdoorsy camp growing up and like we'd go to Colorado go on road trips from Chicago to Colorado every summer. And we'd go there in the winter too for skiing and camping and hiking and stuff. So I love that. But you know, there's so there's so much creativity online. And like, I came up through a sketch comedy group that uh, got our start on YouTube at a time when, you know, that's kind of in the past now, but then people were like, what is this? And now I feel the same way about TikTok and Instagram and it's a lot. So I don't know. I think I'm, I'm still trying looking for like balance in my life about like, how to make it work for me because it's a little overwhelming. Um, so yeah, and I think, which I think uh, the movie's really about is finding that balance. Um, so I, I really relate to that. I'm definitely in the middle. Yeah, and and I'm I'm sort of, uh, <laughs> I actually have been doing this thing recently with my wife where uh, at night we're like, well, let's like lock up our phones for four hours and talk. And we found that like within eight minutes we were having like the deepest, most intimate connection we've had in years. Cause it was like, it was like, um, there's a lot of silence here. Uh, what's your childhood like? Jesus, you know? <laughs> so, but it, it, you know, out of that like mild discomfort of like, whoa, what are we gonna talk about? We were like, oh, this was, it was crazy how, how uh, much better the conversation was just not having our phones in the same room. Uh, That's incredible. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Amanda, Guide for Moms. 
Hi guys. I love this. Hi. I loved it so much, especially the weird, you know, the embracing weirdness because when someone calls me weird, I take it as a compliment. <laughs> but yeah. My question is for Michael. Um, as I was watching this, you know, your, the character Aaron, I kept questioning, you know, he seemed, I, I thought maybe autistic or, or somewhere on the spectrum. And I wondered, you know, when you wrote it and, you know, approached your character, did you have that in mind in, in any way? Um, it was definitely nothing that I, uh, I mean, it just observed from life and that's what I was like as a kid. So maybe, you know, I don't, I don't know if I am, you know, um, but, um, but I do think that, you know, sort of like, I do think that one thing we were trying to do is sort of like reflect real people and real families, however we could, you know, so if someone takes that great, it wasn't exactly what we were thinking when we did it, but we were also just like trying to like look at our lives and sort of, you know, sort of re reflect that into the movie. So um, I, I don't know, but if, but if you want, if you want to read it that way, I'm great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Susie, Happy Mess Mom. Hi guys, I'm Susie from Happy Mess Moments. Um, just want to go back on the improv because Beck, I knew you were the voice of the robots, but I didn't know if it was every robot. I had to wait till the credits. Like, okay, he he was all the robots because it you gave it personality. Like each robot had some kind of personality. And going on the improv, did you have a script or did Mike allow you to have, you know, to play with it? And Mike, how much did you allow your actors to have fun with their characters? <laughs> I, I mean, he was very supportive of it. Uh, he really encouraged it. I mean, obviously the script was there. We got all the lines that were written. And I mean, the script uh, really works. And again, it's like a great script that creates great improvisation, I think, that like uh, creates so many ideas. It's such a clear, the joke of these robots trying to understand humanity and having the lack of intelligence, being so intelligent in one way and so unintelligent in another is such a clear comedy dynamic. So it was so fun to improvise uh, in that. Um, yeah, it was great. Yeah, from from the his very first audition, he would just like, cause we had like a couple sides you know, where it's like, oh, try saying this. Here's a couple lines that the robots might say. And it was so fun to see him just like run with it, you know, <laughs> where it's like after the end of the line, he did like eight other lines because it was like, he was really picking up on, oh, this is what's funny about that character. Um, and th that's sort of how we, we structured the movie where it was like, sure, we have lines, but like, it was always like best idea wins, you know, and, and, and Beck was often had the best idea. So we just put it in the movie and it was oh. great because it was like a one line that we didn't have to write. I was like, Hey, there's a free joke. I love it. I didn't have to do anything. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's the highest compliment. <laughs> Tessa, Mama's Geeky. Hi guys. Tessa with Mama's Geeky.com. Uh, my whole family absolutely loves this movie we watched it a few times cool. it's so funny um but mike i want to know so you wrote directed and you're a voice i mean was the plan always going to be that you were going to voice aaron or did that come about during casting no um uh it's it's actually something i'm like <laughs> ashamed of you know uh, i i i think that i i basically we had people come in and we had hilarious 10 out of 10 actors and, and comedians and, uh, you know, sort of, of all, all along the spectrum come in for that character. And some of them, you know, all of them are like far more talented than I am. Um, but there was some strange energy that was in, um, that was in, because I sort of started out by doing the scratch voices, um, uh, you know, for basically before we get real actors to come in, it's like, you just quickly say the lines just so you could see if the scene is working or not. So I would be most of the male characters just because I was always around. Um, and uh, and just the, the, there was something about the energy of the, Aaron, uh, of the Aaron lines that when it was someone else, even if that person was really great, it was like, huh, this doesn't work as well for some reason. Um, and, uh, and so we, we just used me um, so it wasn't, it didn't even feel like a job. It was like already there mostly. It was like, oh, just leave those lines in. Um, and, uh, uh, but, but it's much better to have someone bring something new to it because the things I'm bringing to it are already there. Um, and that's why it's cool working with Beck or Abby or Maya or 
Danny McBride or all these people were like, like lighting up the room with this like hilarious lines and, and adding their own perspective to it and stuff. Whereas, you know, me, it was just like, I knew the perspective. <laughs> I wasn't, there were no <laughs> surprises. Um, but, uh, but it, it is the thing that worked the best, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> for, for, for the world. <laughs> well, it's a hilarious cast and a hilarious movie. So thank you. Thank you. It's true. The cast is great. <clears throat> Emmy with the Mama Diaries. Hey guys, um, I'm Kami from themamadiaries.com. Thank you for having us today. Um, so um, my question, Mike, you, um, I know that the, the movie is based on your family and mm -hmm. it was like Aaron is kind of like you and Linda is your mom, mm -hmm. who's Katie? Um, Katie's probably like a, a little bit of a combination of me also as well as my sister. Um, you know, my sister is really funny and has a lot of like spark and energy. Um, and I sort of like, it just it is a total delight to be around. But I, you know, it's the my side of things is just like going to art school and, you know, sort of, you know, my parents were, were like, ah, art school. Because <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, it's a big risk and like, spoiler alert, I'm not that good at drawing. Um, but um, I, I know I have a lot of friends that are. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so basically, um, uh, so it was it was it was sort of um, it was sort of a combination um, in terms of that. stuff. All right. And Tim, if you want to go ahead and ask one last question, you might go ahead. Sure, Tim Burns of GeekDaddy.com. So is there some special family moments that inspired the stick shift uh, role in the story from you? Um, uh, maybe it's just sort of the, the, the idea that my dad was always trying to teach me stuff. And I was so, I was such a brat about it. I was like, no, <laughs> like, I'm playing <laughs> team boy, um, you know, and he, he's like, you know, hey, you should learn how to, uh, you know, change a tire. And I'm like, when would I ever need to know that? I'm here with Kirby playing Kirby's Dreamland and I don't need any of that BS. But, you know, it's like, obviously it really is good to know how to change a tire or, you know, uh, uh, or fix a fence or any of these things that sort of like he was trying to teach me. So it's sort of a stand in for all the things that your parents try to instill to you that you um, initially think uh, don't matter, um, but actually end up being real. Well, it seemed like when I watched the movie that you had been around recording my family road trips and then just add all <laughs> these angry robots into it. So you did such a great job of incorporating that family experience. That's cool. uh, All right, everybody, that was time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, thanks guys. Thank you. The old Monchi pillows. Yes, yeah. it's Monchi spinoff. We need a spinoff. <laughs> yeah. We should. Monchi and the robots. There, there we go. go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All righty, you may please exit. Please don't be offended if I remove you. No problem. Thank you.